The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here. This is the Thursday edition of the Tiger Technicians Hour. This is the 4th of August and we're looking at the Dow down 47 to 32,764. So let me get to this because uh, it's really difficult for me. I, I'm not, I'm, I've never been very good at actually advertising all the different things that I, I, I do. I just kind of like to do it, and whatever happens, happens. But it's so important because I've got what I consider to be a time-wise, a really important Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, all-day webinar. I haven't done all-day webinar for quite some time. And, you know, within that webinar, I do a lot of things, and I've been trying to demonstrate over the last week or two what I will be doing and I, I treat the uh, one, two, five, ten minute uh, e mini charts as kind of a, the demo. Uh, it's the only way I can exhibit publicly what I do, other than what I do privately, which is through my subscribers to my opening call. We've had some really good gains uh, percentage wise. One of them is uh, actually uh, this morning, I, I haven't checked it now, but early this morning it was up 40% from where we entered. Uh, the other part of it, we got two parts of it. The other part was up uh, over 30%. We've got another one that was up over 30%. So, the, I, I mean, all I can say is that if you see the live demonstration, then you'll know if it fits within the category of the type of thing that you, you like to do. So what I'll be doing is the topics to be covered, technical tools based on the Chapman Way methodology explained live, um, studying and practicing entry and exit points, assessing where to add or subtract from positions, projecting price and time targets. This is all the stuff I do live every day. Uh, utilizing simple technical tools for holding positions longer, taking bear charts and add notations, tools, patterns. And what I am going to say is that you should know over the years, this is what I used to do way back when I, 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 I uh, once or twice um, subscribed to Granville, but mostly I would hear what he was doing, and it usually coincided very much with what I was, that's Joe Granville, and it was way back. And I, over the years, I've learned that certain technicians that I listen to are just fabulous at something. Maybe not everything, but at something. And that's where I want to listen to them are they good at? And that's what you should be doing yourself. Whatever you're listening to, you say, hey, that person really knows how to nail, and maybe it's a particular sector. They always nail that sector, or whatever it is. So in my, my particular instance, the thing that I, I constantly work at all the time is once we get into positions, and we usually get into positions really well, where do I put the stops? Even if there is, and I always say, if you can get the timing right at the lows or the highs, you have a tremendous cushion because once it takes off, then you can watch it zig and zag all over the show because you're in at such a nice level that you've got a huge comfort zone. But if you get in slightly out of that comfort zone, then I tend to want to put in a stop. And every once in a while, we get stopped out of a stock that I really love, I want to hold, but I just don't have money management. So that's a, that's a something that I constantly work on all the time, and I make it I make it known because everybody should know the strengths and weaknesses. So um, in this, and we're, we're looking utilizing simple technical tools for holding positions longer, taking bear charts and add notation tools patterns, identifying three core formations that repeat in every time frame, analyzing time frames to extend the duration, and answering and practicing your questions as they come up. Now, I'm still making the decision whether I'm going to officially call it a live presentation, uh, 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 trading live, because that, it means that sometimes people are so busy looking at the trade, they don't really understand the whole methodology behind it. But I've done so many, I, I, I was looking, I've got so many webinars up that you can go through any one of these techniques in the webinar in your own leisure at any point. So what I've done over the last two days, I haven't quite refined it enough, is I've tried to got, get the core. I've, I've got a little package that I'll send, a couple of pages of, of definitions and, and what we're looking at and why we're looking at those things, and then extrapolate from that data and basically what I'm looking at here is, do, 
I know there are a lot of people that really love the live trading. Certainly, you've got to include me in that in that category. But at the same time, I mean, we have positions. We've got a, the dollar position long from, uh, look at this, the dollar DXY trading right now at 106.31. We, we own this from, look at this, I'm going to go back because it's all notated right here. Long at 90.07, the 6th of April, 2018. So we can hold things for a little while. <laughs> and we've got two positions. I haven't added it. One position was off at 96.58. And I think the other one was off at 107. So, um, and we are still long, except I am considering that the dollar is in a digestive phase. And we'll see how long that digestive phase works. Let me just do this at the same time. That that says that gold could finally get back to the inverted Chapman wave falling axe formation. As these patterns come up, I will discuss them. Um, I'm not going to make them a formal thing in the booklet that gets sent. I usually do that, but I they just I want to fixate on on what I know people see all the time and what they like to work at. That to me is the most important thing. So what we are looking at is this pattern where there's a ri rising highs and rising lows, but much higher rising highs. And then it comes down, forms the H pattern, or sorry, the arch pattern in the dreaded H formation, and then tests the left side low. Well, if it rebounds and it starts to take out this rising inside track, uh, what was a propellant, now it's a repellent zone, and gold starts to trade at 8.56 on a weekly. It has to be on a weekly basis. I su suggest to you that that's where you will see the EUR, USD, the euro, which is actually just acting okay right now, go from 1.019 up into the 1.038, 1.041 area. You will start to see the USD, JPY, the yen, which made a peak G top in the Chapman wave, has a beautiful arch formation, has come down in a shorter time period, made a lower low than the left side low back in June, and is trading right now at 133.36, down 50 cents. Um, hit the nine period moving average, uh, the pink nine period moving average, which says this is in a sell mode, and that's what the one that you have to see a price move above it so that eventually the pink can go over the black to in the the 14 period moving average i'll be discussing these moving averages in great detail we'll use them all the time in in our in our practice sessions and you're going to whatever questions you ask i'm going to deal with right away and we'll practice those over and over and what we're looking at here is that the the yen has made a peak f in the weekly chart and i suspect Right now, it's at a 300% extension. It went even higher than that. It went all the way to the one, uh, 139, just under 140. It's trading at 133. I suspect that this whole area going to the 127s, 128, 127 area, could be filled. And how it gets filled and the speed with which it gets filled is going to be really important because any time the um, yen goes under 125, that's just another cup of tea altogether, and that's probably where you'll see the dollar. If that happens, then you'll see the dollar at about 102. But at this point, the dollar's holding okay at 106.22, just down 15 ticks. I'll be right back. Dow's down 50. S P down two quarter. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So let's just do this in terms of uh, what we're looking at uh, based on the techniques that I'll be teaching in my, in my course. There's a pattern that I call the large rectangle. And within that rectangle, very often, you can see a rebound, a sharp move down, and then a slow rebound that is a stair-step move that goes to peak A, then a peak B, and then a peak C, and then finally a peak D, just under, right on, or just above the previous high of the rectangle, which is the lopsided gravy cup pattern. And look what happened. 33.272 was the high back at first. I think it was the 1st of June. Plunged down to 29.653 on the 17th of June, and four days ago, we had 32,972, just under the previous high at a peak D. That's the technique that I'll be teaching. That's what we look at. Look at the S&P. S&P, the same pattern, cup formation, lopsided cup formation, and within the context of the 4177 high, uh, around about the beginning of June, end of May, it pulled back to 36.36.87, the sharp pullback on the 17th of June. It starts a move up of the doji candle. I'll be talking about the three or four candles that I always use. And lo and behold, we go peak A, peak B, peak C, and we were waiting for that D, and the D came in, and the D came in yesterday at uh, 41.67.66. Let's change that, 41.47.66. All right, and the high today is 41.43. So we are underneath that by a little bit. And this is exactly where I said, I think based on the 200 period exponential moving average as a magnet, which is at 41.87, this is where I'm anticipating from the cup formation, the left side high, which was our target, 41.77. We got to 41.47. This is the area that we would expect some kind of resistance. When you're looking at numbers, for those of you who have been uh, subscribers or listened to me uh, for the 20 years I've been here at TFNN, you know that whenever we get to uh, a millennial level, millennium level, like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, I always say as you're getting closer, the chances are, and in this particular case, I was saying the chances are for the Dow that the whole area of 32,900 
should be strong resistance. And even if we go slightly above it, I suspect this is where we're going to have some kind of uh, a seesaw battle, yo-yoing uh, over the next uh, maybe even a, a week, just because we've had such a big move. So the question came up, uh, Basil, is this a short covering rally? Are we about to go all the way down again? Or is this is a real buy? There is absolutely a real buy. And what's really important about this is that if you're able to identify, and, and I, I tried my best, I think we've succeeded in doing it, identifying that this is going to be where the laggards, the ones that had 60, 70, 80, even 90 percent declines in like the NASDAQ, this is where they have their best bounce. <clears throat> that bounce is rotating into other areas within the sectors so that the ones that didn't even move very much were in like a, a narrow rectangle formation for a while are now about to try to break out. I would even put gold kind of in that category to a certain extent. Um, and most importantly, it says the whole idea of rotation that I, 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 I elicited, this is, this is what I was talking about back in the summer of 2010, where I said, I was anticipating that that perfect buy signal that we got the day of the low, March the 6th, 2009, uh, on the Friday, the S&P made its low on the Monday uh, at 666. I said, we'll see if there's going to be the usual internal low and residual low. Uh, meaning that the, like an earthquake and an aftershock, sometimes aftershocks are even worse than the earthquake, the damage. Sometimes they are much less, but there is an aftershock. And I said, we'll see whether or not we get the rotation into an arch formation that comes back and retests the lows or not. But we, we're in. I widened the stop in the very beginning, and then I, I shortened the stop in the diamonds. Um, and we actually had calls as well that we rotated into. So most importantly... Um, that allowed us, that gave us the, the, the idea that if there's a rotation in the summer of 2010, it sets up a modus operandi for the market for a while. That while has actually been for 12 years because you've seen rotations all the way through, even in the, the huge decline that we saw from November, December, January, depends which index you're looking at. So the big idea here is that we, we had seen, for instance, steel stocks had spectacular runs and then they gave back a huge amount. Then they had another one. Now they've given back a big amount and some of them are starting to rally again. And that kind of rotation into the different sectors, you say, wait a minute, how can this, under these conditions, why would steel stocks start to move? Well, it's just part of this whole rotation. So the answer is, I believe that there has been new buying. And I also believe over the last three days or so, We've started to see people that were absolutely reluctant to do anything start to get in. And that's telling me that we're real close to some kind of a shorter term top. A top meaning that the upside is now limited, but we could start to expand consolidations to the downside. Do we go back and test the left side low? In this case, just the most recent one was 29,653. Um, in the Dow, and here we are at 32,722, uh, 3,000 points higher. Well, if you think about the amount of time that it's taken, if you think about the price going from 29,600, let's say, to 32, let's call it 33,000, that's a decent rally, but it's not great. It's not like the start of the big move, but I believe it's the building of bases in many, many areas. So my answer is be prepared. I, I, we've still got a big cash position. We're waiting for those big moves to the downside that come with who knows what the news is because the news itself keeps rotating. And at some point we will get a, another big slide. But I think that whole 31,000 to 30,500 on the Dow at this particular point in this particular time frame, summer time frame, I think that's a good cushion. I also believe only when we start to trade on a three-week basis above 34,000 can we start to say, aha, now we can start to talk about the monthly charts. But at this particular point, the monthly charts have started a little gray A, meaning they've made a higher high than last month's uh, higher on, on the candle. And that means you have to notate it because your obligation in the Chapman Wave methodology, which I will teach you, well, we'll teach on Wednesday is just to notate everything, every peak and trough, because that just gives you a tremendous 
uh, heads up as to what's happening. You've got the S&P. S&P is also starting the monthly chart, gray leg A. A tremendous resistance at the 9 and 14 period. Moving average is 41. Uh, about where, where we were at the high today of 41.47. Uh, uh, sorry, yesterday um, in that area. And we're also looking at 200 period moving average, which you could have ignored up until now. Now it becomes a magnet. I'm going to be teaching about magnets. Look at that magnet. The way the price went like a zigzag all the way around the 200 period moving average between 44.14 and 46.37 for so long. And then it broke down. And then you didn't have to even think about the 200 period moving average, but all of a sudden you do. Look at the QQQ. Uh, same thing back in April. Hits the 200 period moving average, and that was Sayonara. It came all the way down to the double bottom at 269. And now we're trading at 322. That's a very nice move, not a great move. I'll be back in a moment. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So, again, I just asked me, Basil, do you remember Atom? Atom is uh, Atomara Inc. Uh, I absolutely do. I don't know why it's not notated because I remember at the time notating it. Uh, this is a stock that once was at 45 and just uh, two months ago was in the 9 area and now it's trading at 13.24 leg D. Let me just double check. So this is a pattern that I, I love to talk about. It's where the dreaded H takes out the left side low, but within two bars it goes higher. And the MACD and stochastic are giving you signals to say, hey, that was a, a huge uh, a positive divergence. And that says you can now make the case that the lowercase h is going to go to a beautiful cup formation, maybe getting to the last high, or even the one that started the whole move down. Well, lo and behold, it's done that. 
And let me just show you something. One of the techniques that I'll be teaching uh, is this. Look, look how easy. You don't have to have rectangles. You can just have a straight line. Look, I'm going to a particular um, a plumb line, and I'm saying, is it possible that within a certain period of time, number of bars, you can go all the way back to that level, uh, maybe in a shorter time frame, but at least in that time frame? Well, lo and behold, look at this. Here's your plumb line. Let me just do it. In the, here we are. The plumb line is right here. Whoops, it's one bar off. I was one bar off. So we'll increase it by one. There you are. One bar off, and we'll increase this by one. There it is. So not only did it do exactly that, Peaky, I don't have to tell you because you have, I believe you have this still. Um, this is at. Atomera, Atomera um, Inc. Is this a biotech or something like that? Um, and lo and behold, look what we've got. I've got the other technique that I'll be teaching. How can you use the left side to be able to draw the Chapman Wave inside wedge target repellent zone? Well, there's a particular way that I do it, and that's what I'll be teaching. And it said that by, um, I usually make this green on the way up, and the way down is called the Chapman Wave inside wedge target uh, support level. In this case, it's the target resistance level. Usually, I make it green, and I make it like that, dashed. There it is. And it said that by the uh, 8th of August, 8822, it should hit the left side high of the 27th of May, 13.30. Well, it did it three days before. It did it yesterday's high was 13.40. No, 13.39. Huh. And today's high is 13.39. So that's a technique. Yeah, so I love this. It's achieved everything that you want. Now it could maybe take a little bit of a breather. I can just tell you this, that if it trades any any day, it hits 13.83, all of a sudden you're looking at the 14.23 200-period moving average, which it hasn't even seen, let alone touched or visited, um, for... Since it did, hit it exactly as a resistance level seven times, one, two, three, four, uh, out of, look, it hit it, once it broke down on the 3rd of December under 22, uh, under 20, it tried it, it, it was such a magnet that it kept trying to break it and hit it three times, four times, and then it got repelled and that was it. It hasn't even been close. So that says to you that the technicals have improved a lot. If you look at the cup formation, um, it's okay. It's not great. But it does say that once it starts to trade in August, if it can trade about 1453, you've broken all the resistance levels from March of this year. Uh, from, yeah, from the beginning of March of this year. And that's going to be a big thing. And key support should be in the 1230 to 1180 area. Hope that helps you. Okay, question came in. Basil, could you look at AG? AG, I think this is in the, um, here we go, A, AG. AG is um, first magenta, silver core. Used to have this all notated. This is in a strong leg, B to the upside. It's at $7.98. So I have no choice but to call this a buy signal that I should wait for the end of the day. Uh, it's trading at 795. If we can close above 790, it's gone from a buy signal to a buy mode, and that's suggesting strongly that uh, we're looking at first magenta on a daily basis, trying to tackle the left side high of the 21st of June, which is 836. Uh, it has a little bit of resistance at 820 which is 820 is the high of the 27th of June. So the question comes in, how would I draw the uh, patterns? Because it's definitely got the falling axe formation. But most importantly, now it's starting to demonstrate strength. So I would definitely go to that candle right there. I draw the arch, the, the quarrow, the left side semicircle. Now I'm joining the right side semicircle. And what we're looking at is we want to go from here to up. I'm happy with this Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line. 
Now I look at the left side and say, hey, wait a minute, how can I join all of these? Uh, where would I go? Well, obviously, I can't go to the, um, I cannot go to the right side because this is the plumb line here. Plumb line says, wow, you're going to go all the way to there. Just be conservative at first. So I am conservative. I, I'll teach which candle to use. And now I'm going left side, right side. I'm going to keep this up and we'll look at it next week and see how accurate this was. And it says, oh, that fits exactly. Uh, not quite exactly. So to be a bit conservative, I would go to the outside of that line. I say, yeah, even though it's hit perfectly every one of those resistance levels, to be aggressive, it means that by Friday, going into Monday, 8.33 could be the target. Um, I'm going to be a little bit more conservative and say normally I would want to go to what matches both in time and price and it says maybe we're going to go to the 11th of, of August, and that makes the not the 820, but the 836 uh, level a target. It could do it before. I'm just saying this is a nice way to do it. And at 84%, the stochastic good, on balance volume is lagging, relative strength is just kind of average, and the MACD is good, and the 9 is way over the 14. Yes, I like it. And 832 is the 14 period exponential moving average that in the weekly chart that it hasn't hit since it broke down back in April of 2022. Hope that helps you. Okay. Um, next question is uh, can we look at the SQQ for an entry? <clears throat> The SQQ, well, let's just look at the QQQ and then I can go from there. So the QQQ, which is the NVX 100 trading vehicle, this is the Invesco QQQ Trust Series, um, hit a new recovery high today of 324.52. It's starting the pullback that I'm anticipating in leg E. We, we're in this in the long, on the long side. We've taken some profits. So this morning I almost took some off saying let's take a little bit. That means we'd have four little bits taken off. I, to me, I just need to have a little bit of room, so I'll give up some of the gain uh, uh, this particular part right now to see because there could be just enough energy for one more flow to the upside and how that is activated because the 200 period of 327.33 is really going to be key. So now what I like to do is go to the SQQQ because this is going to be the exact, the exact inversion from a peak D in the weekly chart, what's the objective in the Chapman wave? Is to get you to a D. Well, lo and behold, it went to a D in the inverse from the, the starting point, which is that was the low that was counted. That was the low that was made, I think, the last week of December. Let me just take it. Yep, the last week of December 28.15. So we'll look at the inverse because a lot of people are saying, are we ready to go short? Are we ready to do what? The Dow is down 147, S&P is down 80. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, yes, EQT is consolidating right now. That was the question of the den. Uh, to, you want to rebuy? Let's see how if it can get to the 30, uh, 39 level. Give me a yell. We'll look at it together. So we were looking at the SQQQ. Oh, I, I wanted to show you this. Look, uh, this is the live. I drew this in earlier on as I was coming onto the show. Um, and then I left it. There's a left side, right side price time match. And you see this trend line right at the 200 period moving average. How important is this? This is about as important as any tool you want to talk about. You can do about Fibonacci. You can do about a Chapman wave methodology. You can do about anything you want. But the 200 period moving average is fantastic. Look at that. There it is. Look at those resistance levels. And then it got repelled and it pulls back. Why? Because it's a nice long look back period. 200 200 bars of whatever you're looking at, right? And it's telling you a whole bunch of information. And look at this trend line. This is what I'll be teaching. You see this trend line? I didn't have a chance to do this. I should have just extended it down because um, that's the way you need to draw these trend lines. Well, look what happened. The dreaded H pattern. Remember we talk about that all the time? This is the E-mini one-minute chart. Went to a peak D. Just above the 200 period moving average, then turned down, then across negative. That means that if you were short, you had 41.55, you would have been short. Here it is at 41.39. And now it's starting to show a little bit of strength, so you can make decisions about maybe taking some part off, keeping some part, et cetera, et cetera. But isn't this, I mean, this is a nice tool. Then what I would do is I'd automatically draw in a channel. The channel is two parallel lines. Well, the channel doesn't take the peak detox. It takes all the, all this of this right now, and all of a sudden it's flattening out. Time alone will see you go out of the channel. So you've got to exclude the time part of it and say, are the technicals improving enough to confirm that the pink can move over the black so that it goes, turns green for another buy signal? So that's just technique, techniques, easy stuff. Now, what do you have to know here? You have to know nothing. That you didn't even need the Chapman wave notation. You just need to look at these different, these automated uh, tools that you have right there. Everybody has them. All of you have a 200 period exponential moving average. All of you have a nine and a 14. Uh, it won't change color. That I had developed for me. But uh, big deal. Make one thick, one thinner. You know, when the thick goes when the thin goes over the thick, it means something. Or it goes under, it means something. That's the use of it. All right. So let's get out of that. Now what I'm looking at is. Within the context of this digestive phase that I was talking about, how does the SQQQ, which is the inversion of the um, of the uh, uh, TQQQ, three times long, this is three times short, how, what, what's the implication? Well, the monthly says, just on a purely visual basis, the 9 has gone under the 14 period moving average. So now it's just about to turn pink, but the week isn't over. It's still got another uh, day and a half to go. The nine, the 14 period moving average um, tells you that that whole 46 to 47 area is key resistance. You're at 37 right now. The weekly chart MACD is turned down. The stochastic is way down at 27%. The uh, blue 
uh, on balance volume is now way below the, the levels it was at just four weeks ago. Now we can look at this. So my, my, my answer to the question is, if I would show it, I'm going to show you this. Look, that peak D right there uh, on the 20th of May at 63.86 had all the ingredients to say that is a sell signal. But within the context of the starting point to get to that peak D, that whole thing started right here. Um, with, this is, I drew this in as an unconventional flat-based restart. Oh, I didn't want to get into that. That just moves us a couple of steps more than I want to do right now. Basically, what it says, this particular pattern, that's why I drew this in, and I usually type in Chapman Wave unconventional flat base restart should come back to this level, and that would be 43.31 right, or 43 right there. Um, and no matter what it does, it's going to go chop, chop, chop to the upside. It looks like Bart Simpson's hair and spikes up and spikes down, spikes up, and then it goes to peak, gray peak A, gray peak A, right there, and then you can consider that this is E slash B, E slash B, and then it goes to an F <coughs> slash C. And you say, am I expecting <coughs> a D? Well, you don't know, but in the cup formation, that's another technique that you need to learn. In the cup formation, the inversion of the Chapman Wave um, dreaded H pattern what we're looking at here is that the technicals, you do a vertical analysis, look what happened. The technicals right here were extremely strong. The technicals right here, right there, um, the MACD was way under what it was before. The stochastic bounced a little bit, was okay. On balance volume was turning down, so you didn't really know. So this is where... I do the analysis because you want to do the mirror image, the S&P. Well, the S&P made a lower low when the technicals were starting to improve and then went down to the 36, 36, 87 level, the little doji candle on the 17th of June. And with it, that, that, that's the day that we actually we went along the, the Dow for the same reasons that there was a positive divergence. In this particular instance, you would have had, it would have been tough. I'm not, I'm not making up anything here. I'm saying S, Q, Q, Q. Oh, oh, I went to the s and I meant to go to the Q, Q, Q. Thank you for reminding me. The Qs. The Qs made a lower low with the technicals way superior. That was the big thing. That's the reason why we wanted to go along the Qs the moment we could. Um, and that was, that's the difference. That this arch pattern where for three bars, you actually were closing underneath the 280 level. You got a brand new buy signal that went to a buy mode. So that was a little different, and that makes it a little more difficult uh, in the in the sense that in using the SQQQ <clears throat> as a indicator would have been very tough. I did it purely on the on the cues themselves. So <clears throat> that's one thing. Now, so the SQQ. What was the question? Uh, question. Well, I should have remembered the question. But as a company, look at the SQQ for an entry. So as an entry for the SQQ now, for the long side, I would recommend two things. One is, <clears throat> I don't think we're quite done yet for the upside before we get about a three to a five or even a seven session consolidation, if that's going to happen. So the only thing I would do, since you're using 300% long, if you're going to enter here, is I would start a small position right here at 37.34. I have to say, based on this particular pattern here, that the left side low that I would have focused on, and I'm going to do that right now, is this whole area as a low, <coughs> and treat that high right there as my left side, right side price time match, I'm going to go right here and make that pink. There it is. And that says that's way too far. So you, you sometimes just try an error because I want to do it on, on a mathematical basis. Oh, we've got one more section to go. Let me just do this. 
One more time. There. Okay. All right, I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Tiger Jim, this is our. We'll be talking about left side, right side, price, time matches. Be back in a moment. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. There it is, folks. So let me just say that for the SQ50, where would you enter? You know, I would only start a very small position right here at 37.28. I still see residual strength. And so far, I don't see a, a, a very big sell-off. So this would just be a start. I would do this. I would start a move at 37.26. I would probably have to have at least, uh, just for the moment, I'd have like a, a one and a half point stop, maybe a two point stop on this smaller position. But if by today's Thursday, if by Friday afternoon at three o'clock, the market, the Dow is down more than 180 in the S&P, no matter what happens today, by tomorrow, if it's down 180 from today's close, then I think you can start over the weekend looking at Monday. You can actually start at the end of the day on Friday adding to that position. But I, I also don't, at this point, 41.14 is the nine period moving average resistance. I just don't see it having the big move now. I think it might be a little later when it has. Right now, I still see internal strength. Uh, NKEE -E is a, a, um, a Nike is just about to get to that leg D. Um, it's doing very nicely, Nike, nicely. 
but it hasn't shown tremendous strength yet for all the technicals that have been improving. And that just says to me, think of it more as being in a rectangle formation with, 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 a, um, with a semicircle right here. And that says, it's taking, you see the semicircle is too slopey on the right. It's taking too much time. And that just says it's going to need another trigger to get that move to the 122 area. And here it is at 114. So just one step at a time. What it does say is that maybe it can go sideways between 115 and a half, maybe 116 short term with good support at 112 to 111. Okay, folks, I, I, I made a decision just a moment ago. I was able to open up a, a slot in this next hour. I'll be back here for the next hour. And there's a lot that people want to talk about. They want to talk about the grains, etc. I'll do I'll do the type of thing Larry does. Of course, not the way Larry does it. But I'll go through some of those commodity areas, which I think right now it's kind of important to be looking at. I'll be back in a moment. I'll do the news, and I'll do the hour, 11 o'clock to noon. Um, Basil Chapman, 